Bar with Mary. Today's class is a full length bar class geared toward beginners. So we're gonna move at a slightly slower pace. It's still gonna be really challenging, but I'm gonna talk a lot more about alignment, about cues, and about modifications, just so you have a little bit more information when you do move into a faster paced class. So what all you need for equipment today are the set of light weights. So I have a set of two pounders. So when I say light, I really do mean light weights. I'm not talking five pounders here. If you don't have anything in the lightweight variety, you are more than welcome to go ahead and just grab two cans of beans or a couple of filled water bottles, or even do this whole class body weight. That's a great option as well. Go and set your weights off to the side, and we are gonna start class with a warm up. So we're gonna take the legs wide here into a wide turned out position. So if you extend your arms out to the sides of the room, your feet would come just about underneath your hands. And then you're gonna externally rotate the legs. What that means is your thigh bones are going to rotate open outward. From there, we're gonna sink down, bending the knees. And the goal is to keep the shoulders back so they're stacked over the hips. If you don't have a ton of hip mobility, you might find that leaning forward is more successful for you and that's absolutely fine, you should do that. From here, go ahead and take your hands to the heart and just start to press all the way down and up, go down and lift, yes. So this position is really a very classic bar position. You might hear it called other things. Somebody might call it a second position or a wide second. In yoga, this would be called horse pose. It's all the same thing. The heels are out just about under the palms and you're externally rotating the legs, whoa. <laughs> Hopefully you're not falling over like me. You're turning the legs outward so that the inner thighs are rotating up to the ceiling and that's gonna give you a little bit more heat into the outer glutes and into the outer thighs. It's also gonna to start to open up the hips. Now I want you to meet me with your hips down low in four, three, two. We're gonna stay low here. Now all I want you to focus on is squeezing the energy of your heels in towards each other. And then I want you to hold it. So heels squeeze in, breathe. Heels squeeze in. Breathe, yes, yeah, so keep going really slowly like that. As you squeeze the heels in, what I'm hoping you find is a little bit more activation in the inner, outer thighs, and into the glutes. You feel your inner thighs rotating open up to the sky. You feel your outer glutes engaged to hold your thigh bones in place. Yes, two more times, squeeze and hold. Now squeeze the heels in, hold the squeeze of the heels and just take a little down, little up, little down, little up. So a really small pulse here. You're gonna find this small range of motion a lot in a bar class. Reason being, the idea for bar is that you get into a position where your muscles are contracting and you hold them there. So you have an isometric contraction. And then after you've fatigued the group of muscles you're focusing on, you're gonna stretch it out and lengthen it. You're here for four, three, two. Now let's just stay low, take a big breath in. As you exhale, feel your heels squeeze in and then sink the hips a little bit lower. Maybe you're a little bit more open in the hips and you can lift the chest a little bit more now. One more time, inhale. Exhale, sink a little lower. Just hold and breathe, you're here for four. Here for three, inner thighs rotate up, it's two. Now let's just stand all the way up. Rotate the legs to parallel, so all 10 toes are pointing forward. And then just take a stretch, folding over the legs. And anytime you take a stretch, I want you to do whatever version of that stretch feels right for you on that day. So for me today, I'm gonna to do a little sway of the hips here, shake out the head, get the neck nice and soft. Take a big inhale and a big exhale. Walk your hands over to the left side of your mat and come down to all fours. So the hands are gonna be underneath the shoulders and the knees are gonna be underneath the hips here. I want you to start by thinking about your hand foundation. So we really spread the fingers wide and you push down through all 10 finger pads. So almost like you're gonna spring up and off of the mat. I want you to really actively push down to the 10 finger pads. Now from there, imagine squeezing your thumbs in and really find how strong and active you can be through your hands. So you take pressure out of your wrist joints. We're not gonna change the shape of our spine. 
We're just going to tuck our toes here. I want you to take a big inhale. And as you exhale, I want you to imagine my hands are on the sides of your waist and I'm hugging the sides of your waist in toward midline. So we're finding neutral in our spine, meaning we're not dropping the belly and arching the back. If you glance up, you'll see I'm arching here. And we're not rounding and tucking the tailbone or the pelvis, I should say, under. We're finding that long position here. So again, inhale and exhale. Imagine my hands on the sides of your waist, hugging in, 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 in. So everything is wrapping in towards midline. And then you feel the front low ribs draw together and lift up to the sky. Now, I don't want you to change anything in this amazing alignment you have. All I want you to do is take a big inhale. And on your exhale, we're going to hover the knees just two inches, not very high off the mat. Then we're going to inhale, tap them right back down. Exhale, lift to hover. Inhale to tap. You're going to keep going with that pattern, exhaling and lifting, inhaling and tapping. As you lift, notice if your belly drops down towards the mat and you allow your ribs to open and spread. I'm gonna really challenge you to feel the low belly band lift up every time you hover the knees so that we're not changing anything in the shape of our spine. We're just making our abdominals work harder. Two more, we lift, we tap. The last one, we lift. When we tap, now I want you to lift the knees and hold it. Just breathe. Inhale to lengthen. And as you exhale again, sides of the waist hug in. Low ribs hug in. And you hold here four. Hold here three. Hold here two. Tap the knees. Untuck the toes. Now take a moment, kind of cat-cow. Inhale, drop the belly. Lift the heart, lift the gaze. Exhale, round the spine. Hollowing out, tucking the chin to the chest. Keep going like that, and notice how different the shape of the spine is here than it was in that all fours bare plank position. So in this, we're intentionally arching and opening the ribs, and then we're intentionally rounding and hollowing, pulling the rib cage up. When you're in your neutral, you want to be right in between these two positions. Meet me in that neutral position. Shoulders stack over the wrists. Inhale. Exhale, press down through all 10 finger pads. Squeeze the thumbs in. Now nothing's going to change. All we're going to do is extend our right leg out and our left leg out. So we're in a high plank position. We're not going to be here long. It's the exact same concept though. I want you to squeeze your thumbs in, spread your collarbones wide, and feel the back of the head press towards the ceiling so you're really open to the throat. Now inhale, lengthen the heels back and the crown of the head forward. Exhale, my hands are on the sides of your waist. We're squeezing in, 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 in. Now feel the low belly right in between your hip bones. Pull that up towards the sky here. And just hold and breathe. You're here for four, here for three, here for two. Tap the knees down, find a child's pose. Big toes together, knees open wide. Walk the hands forward and let your forehead melt down into the mat. If that was a lot on your wrist joints, go ahead and feel free to circle around here and know that you get a nice long break off of your hands. Take one more big inhale and let it go. Walk yourself up. Swing your legs around in front of you and we're going to lay back on our back. Now I want you to plant your feet and let your head really be heavy down on the mat. We're going to keep our head down here for this series. The arms are going to start by just resting at your side. Now take a big inhale here. As you exhale, I want you to feel your rib cage, maybe even take your hands to your ribs. Exhale, knit the ribs in and actively feel the backside of your ribs pressing down into the mat. So you feel the ribs draw together and down. That is the position we want to keep our ribs in for the entire series, honestly for almost the entire class. So the ribs draw in. Beautiful. Now the pubic bone is going to continually think about pulling up towards the belly button. So never are we going to allow the pubic bone to tip down towards the heels. 
pubic bone draws up. Now it's up to you if it draws up so much that your low back flattens into the mat, that's totally fine. Or you can stay neutral where you have a little bit of space under your low spine. From here, extend the arms up to the sky. Soften the arm bones down in the socket and lift up onto your tippy toes so the heels are lifted off the mat. Take an inhale. As you exhale, hug the ribs down and then feel the low belly pull down as you fold the right leg up and then tap the right leg down on an inhale. Switch, exhale, left leg lifts and left leg lowers. So we're just gonna take this little march from side to side. And what I wanna challenge you to find is that you are not allowing your abdominals to puff up towards the sky, nor to lift the leg. You're actually doing the opposite. I want you to feel the abdominals hugging in and pulling down in order to lift the leg. If for just a moment you want to visualize with me, imagine you have a belt tied around your pelvis. And every time I'm lifting the leg, I'm thinking about pulling that belt really tight. So that the bony points of my pelvis, these hip bones around the front, drop in towards each other every time I lift the leg. What that's going to do is activate the deep core, the transverse abdominis, and really keep me out of my low back. Beautiful. If you're starting to feel this in your low back, I want to encourage you to think about flattening your low back down into the mat. That's going to give you a little bit more length and a little bit more space to engage the abdominals. If you're feeling okay, maybe play with keeping a little bit of space, just a little bit between your low back and the floor. Four more, it's four, three, two. Now I want you to meet me with your right leg lifted, hold it there, inhale. As you exhale, you're gonna press your right leg out towards straight, and you draw it right back in. Stay with the right leg out and out, and in and in. As you press the right leg out, you feel the right side obliques hugging in and down, so you're really engaging the right side of the body. If you're feeling like you want a little bit more, take the left arm simultaneously back and in. Beautiful. Exhale out. Inhale in. So this variation is known as dead bug. And this is a really fantastic variation just to start your series in because you get this contralateral movement in which the right hip bone and the left bottom rib are trying to meet in the middle. So every time you reach out, I want you to exhale and feel those two points wrapping in towards one another. You have two more like that, reach and pull. The last one goes reach and pull. Now take everything out and hold it there. Take an inhale, feel more length. As you exhale, I want you to think about your two sits bones, those bony points that you sit on. I want you to squeeze them in, in, in towards one another, and I'm hoping you feel your low belly fire up even more. Beautiful, inhale, bring everything to center. Right leg's gonna tap down to the mat. Exhale, left leg lifts, low belly engages. And just the left leg reaches out and out, pulls in and in. It's two counts out, and two counts in. Now it's the left side obliques that wrap in towards center as you exhale and inhale. You have the option to add the right arm if you'd like a little bit more. So it's the right arm and the left leg and everything comes in. You're feeling now your left hip bone and your right bottom rib trying to touch each other. So you really have that opposite movement of hip and rib cage pulling towards each other on an exhale and inhale, getting a little bit more heat through the obliques, which are the muscles that allow you to twist from side to side. You have two more, go reach and pull. Last one goes reach. Now I want you to take the arm and leg out and hold it there. Take an inhale. As you exhale, squeeze the sits bones together and really feel how you lower, the, feel the low belly fire up a little deeper. Inhale everything back to center. Now keep your left leg where it is, take an inhale. On your exhale, low belly pulls down, down, down and you lift up to a tabletop position. In tabletop, the knees are over the hips 
and the feet are going to be just a few inches higher than the knees here. Beautiful. Take a breath in. On your exhale, I want you to take just your arms back and draw them in. So again, it's just the arms and draw it in. So this might feel a little silly or a little strange, but as you take the arms back, what I want you to bring your focus to is your rib cage. Many, many of us, as we lift our arms above our head, like to also lift and open the rib cage. So this is a great opportunity to feel how your exhale can really fire up your abdominals, keep the ribs knitting in, and keep the back side of the rib cage pulling down toward the mat. One more just like this, it's exhale back. Inhale in, hold that in, take a breath here. Now as you exhale, I want you to send both legs out and both legs in. It's both legs out and both legs in. Now you might find that both legs out means you go straight up to the sky. That's totally fine. If you're feeling a little more fired up today, you're gonna to reach them more out on the diagonal here. Exhale as you reach. Inhale as you pull. Now this is gonna be the most intense variation that we've done. So it's gonna be the most tempting to arch into your back. Continue to exhale, pull the ribs in, feel the low belly, remember that belt visual? Tie the belt tighter and draw it in. Yes, two more, go reach and bend. Last one goes reach. Now I want you to hold that bend, being sure the knees are stacked over the hips. Take a moment and flex through the wrist joints. Now feel how deeply your abdominals are fired right here. Take an inhale. Exhale, squeeze your sitting bones together, tighten your hip bones, feel your low ribs draw together, and really feel how the sides of the waist are wrapping in. Memorize this position because we're going to find it again very soon, just in an all fours position. So you'll notice this is all fours. We're just asking the abdominals to work really deeply. One more breath in. As you exhale, maybe you reach the arms and the legs a few inches away from each other. And continue to feel the ribs draw together. Here's your hold. You're here for four. Here for three. Here for two. Hug the knees into the chest. And give yourself a moment to rock from side to side. Amazing work. So all of that abdominal work that we just did is most often called flat back. Even though you're not technically all the way flat usually. <laughs> but just so you have that in your little wheelhouse, in your little book of definitions. Allow yourself to rock up and over, coming onto all fours. Same alignment we just had on our back, but this time I'm gonna take it to seat work too. So I want you to press your hands into the mat like you did earlier in your plank position. I want you to feel your shoulder blades spread wide and your front low ribs knitting together. Now, if that belt visual worked for you, here's another great opportunity to use it. Inhale, exhale, feel the belt tightening hip bone to hip bone. Keep that beautiful engagement and just extend the right leg away from you. Nothing changed in the shape of your body other than your leg extending. So notice when you sent the right leg long, did you shift all of your weight over to the left or did you open your hips toward me? Try to realign yourself so the right hip is in line with the left and you shift a little bit more weight into the right palm. From here, lower the right toes to tap the mat, and then squeeze the glutes to lift. It's inhale, lower, and exhale, lift. Yeah, keep going. So as you lower and lift here, I want you to connect with your breath. So your inhale allows you to lengthen, and your exhale allows you to engage deeper into the abdominals. When you use your exhale to engage through the abdominal wall, you're also going to be able to tap into the engagement of the pelvic floor much deeper because the pelvic floor is only able to engage on an exhale since it's connected to your diaphragm. Two more times, go tap and lift. The last one goes tap. Now I want you to hold the lift of that right leg and start to pulse it up one inch. Go a little up, a little up, a little up. So oftentimes in seat work, we tend to lose that engagement in our abdominals, which means we tend to come into an arched position. But if you'll think back 
to the work we did at the very beginning of class for that bare plank, that all fours plank, you'll remember that we were really lifting up to the low belly. We were drawing the sides of the waist in towards midline. And we're keeping the length from the tips of the ears all the way to the pelvis. Now I want you to really actively squeeze, squeeze your right quadricep and get your right leg just a little bit longer. Pulse for eight, seven, six. Here for four, three, two. You're gonna hold that up, take an inhale. As you exhale, I want you to flex your right foot and I want you to try not to move your right thigh bone as you curl your right heel into your seat and then extend it long. So you curl it in and you reach it out. So many of us, as we bend our knee, drop our right thigh bone down because it makes it a lot easier. I'm gonna challenge you because this is your seat work, this is your glute work for today, I'm gonna challenge you to try not to move your right thigh bone. As you curl your right heel to your seat, that's gonna really fire up the back side of the right leg, the right side hamstrings. So you have two more curls in and out. The last one goes in. And now I'm going to curl your right heel into your seat and hold it there. You are welcome to stay up on your hands. If you need a little break for your wrists, join me in coming down onto your forearms. So your elbows come where your hands were, and then your hands press down into the mat to so have this nice little number 11 shape in your arms. From here, I want you to imagine that your elbows are trying to pull back to tap your left knee. So you really actively pull the elbows back and feel the abdominals engage. From here, start to press the right foot up an inch, up an inch, up an inch. Yes, it's a little press, a little press. So my right heel is still curling in toward my right seat. So I'm still really active in the right side hamstrings. I'm trying from there to pulse my right leg just up one inch. You go, little lift, little lift. So a lot of heat should be here in both the right hamstrings and the right glute. We're also continuing to find that same engagement through our abdominals. You're here for eight, seven, six. You're here for four, three. You're gonna hold that lift, take a breath in. Now as you exhale, I want you to bring your thumbs together to touch. From there, extend your right arm out like a little kickstand and rotate your pelvis open towards me. So now I'm no longer squaring my hips down to the mat, but I'm opening my hips and trying to stack my right hip on top of my bottom left. Yes, from here, we're gonna extend the right leg to straight and think about lifting the pinky toe up to the ceiling. Little lift, little lift, little lift. Now you're still fired up to the abdominals. So if you find that you cannot find the same engagement in this position, you are welcome to go back onto your hands in that all fours position but we're still drawing the front low ribs in and back. We're feeling the sides of the waist wrapping in toward belly button. And we're feeling the pubic bone lifting towards the bottom of the ribs. Beautiful. Yes, you have eight more. Here go, eight, seven, six. Here for four, three. This is your hold. I want you to squeeze your right thigh and get your right leg straighter. Now as you exhale, I want you to lift your right pinky toe higher to the ceiling and then push into your left forearm, soften your left shoulder and feel your left side obliques lifting up to so the left side of the waist, lifting up to the sky. Just find balance and find stillness as you take this final hold for the right side glutes for four, for three, for two. Take a child's pose, big toes together, knees open wide, amazing work. C reaches back to the heels, and the forehead melts down into the mat. If it feels good to wiggle the hips from side to side, please do that. Now you stay in this amazing stretch. I'm just gonna rotate myself around so that I'm still facing you when we open our hips. Everybody, take one more big breath in your child's pose. Inhale, exhale and then shift yourself up onto all fours. And let's set ourselves up on the second side. Hands are underneath the shoulders. Again, think back to the flat back abdominal work that we did. Push down through the palms of the hands. Feel that the sits bones are squeezing in towards each other. 
the low belly is lifting, the sides of the waist are hugging in, and the collarbones are really wide. Nothing changes in the shape we're making here. All we do is send the left leg away from us. Squeeze the left quadriceps up. Shift more weight into the left palm. And then really feel that your left hip is in line with your right hip. Tap the left toes down to the mat. And squeeze to lift it up. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. So again, as we extended one leg away, it's very common to shift more weight into the right hip. Rather than shifting weight into the right hip, I want you to feel that your weight is actually shifting more over to the left, which might mean that you have a lot more weight into your left palm than your right, and that's okay. You want to feel your right hip pulling back, and then you want to continue to press your fingertips into the mat and really feel your thumbs squeezing in towards each other. As you lift the leg, we're exhaling, and we're engaging the abdominals so that we're not arching into the back. Two more, go down, and lift. The last one goes down. Now you're gonna hold this lift. Just lift the left leg one inch up. Little up, little up, little lift, yes. So oftentimes, as our glutes get fatigued, we let our belly drop towards the floor and let our low back arch. Not only is that going to be quite uncomfortable, <laughs> but it's gonna take all of the work out of your glutes. So this should be really challenging in your glutes. That's the idea here. And if you find that you're really feeling it in your back, I want to challenge you to maybe try this in front of a mirror and then check in. Notice, am I dropping my belly rather than maintaining length through my whole spine? You're here for eight, six, here for four, three. You're going to hold that lift. Flex the left foot. Now again, it's the left thigh bone that's not going to move at all as you curl your left heel into your seat. And we reach it out. Left heel curls in. Left leg reaches out. Now if you wanted to make this easier, you would drop your left thigh bone down as you curl the heel to the seat. But you're here, which means you don't want to make it easier. <laughs> so I want to challenge you to try to keep your left thigh bone still and just curl the heel up and around it. And reach it out, two more, go in for two. We reach it out for two, the last one in. And now now curl your left heel to your seat. Hold it there. You are welcome to stay up on your hands or you can join me down on your forearms. Elbows come underneath the armpits. Hands are pressing in line with the elbows. Now again, actively pull your elbow tips back towards your knees as you hollow out through the belly. From there, start to press the left leg little up, little up, little up, yes. So you actively press down to the forearms here and feel that you're creating even more length to the back of the neck. So it can be tempting to look up at the screen or to tuck your chin and look back at your legs. See if you can really feel that the tips of the ears are pulling forward towards the top of your mat. So you stay nice and long through the cervical spine. You're here for eight, seven, six. Here for four, three. Hold that lift, inhale. As you exhale, bring the thumbs together to touch. Extend the left arm out like a little kickstand. And here's that rotation. You rotate the hips open towards me. So now no longer are they in line with each other, but your top left hip is stacking over bottom right. You're gonna extend the left leg straight, so pinky toe is lifting up to the ceiling. Little press up, go little press, little press, little press. Yes, soften through your shoulders. And again, really feel all of that activation you did in your abdominals are happening, happening here just as deeply. So the belt is tightening around the hip bones. The sides of the waist are hugging in. The low ribs are drawing in towards one another. And then you're really feeling your right forearm pressing down into the mat so that you can lift up to the right side of the waist just a little bit more. You just have a hold to finish the left side seat in eight, seven, six. You're here for four, three, two. Hold the lift, inhale. 
As you exhale, you're going to squeeze your left quadricep to get the left leg longer. And I want you to lift your left leg as high as you can get it. Push down through the top of the right foot. Push down through the right forearm. And lift up to the entire right side of the body. Hold it here for four. Hold it here for three. Hold it here for two. Find a child's pose. Big toes together. Knees open wide. Reach the seat back to the heels. And take a moment to rock side to side if that feels good for you. Take a big breath in. And take a big breath out. Just a little quick aside. If you ever find that you're doing this seat work in this rotated open position and it doesn't feel good for you, one amazing modification would be just come down onto your side, whether that's propped up or all the way down laying down. You can still do this whole series just like that with the hips stacked. That's an amazing modification if that feels better in your body. Okay, <laughs> on that note, we're gonna come back onto our seat and we're gonna grab our weights. So one way is going to come into either hand here. I want you to sit up really tall. We're going to bend the knees and flex the feet. You might find this is uncomfortable on your hips, in which case, pause me and go grab yourself a couple of, a couple of pillows to sit up on or a yoga block. So you elevate your pelvis. That's going to give you a little bit more space for your hips. Yeah. From here, extend the arms out in front of you. Then pull the palms up to face the ceiling. Take a bicep curl and reach it out. It's bicep curl and reach. Yes, so we're in a neutral spine here. So the ears are stacked over the shoulders. The shoulders are stacked over the ribs. And the ribs are stacked over the hips. Once again, you'll find that it might be tempting to round the low spine here. So if you look up, I'm demonstrating what that would look like. Rather than rounding the low spine, I want you to push down through your sits bones and sit really tall. And again, if you find you don't have the space for that, if you don't have the flexibility or mobility in your pelvis, go ahead and grab something to sit on. I think you'll find that really helps. The arms are extended out in front of you with the palms facing up to the ceiling. You have two more. And out. The last one goes in. Now I want you to hold this one out. Feel the upper arm bones draw back in the socket. Maybe even roll your shoulders up and back. From there, just take a little bend of the elbows and then squeeze the biceps to reach. It's a little bend. Squeeze, I want you to do that faster. Go bend, reach, bend, reach, bend, reach. Yes. So it's a tiny bend and a big extension through both arms. Bend, reach, bend, reach, bend, reach. You're here for eight. I'm hoping you're feeling a lot of heat into the biceps right here. Go three, go two, hold that length, inhale. As you exhale, I want you to rotate your palms so that they face each other. The thumbs are up to the sky. Sit really tall, inhale. As you exhale, we're going to hinge back just halfway, just until we feel our abdominals fire. And then we're going to inhale, sit it up. So it's exhale, hinge, and inhale up. Now, if this is too much with the weights, ditch them. That's absolutely fine. Okay? Hinge it back as you exhale. And inhale to lift. So as we hinge back, it shouldn't be crazy intense in the abdominals. Maybe it is, and that's okay. Far be it for me to judge that, right? <laughs> but I do want you to feel that you're activating the abdominals as you hinge back in order to hold yourself upright. You have two more just like that. Exhale, hinge. Inhale, lift. Now this time I want you to hinge it back, and I'm going to challenge you to hold it there. From here, bend the arms in half so the wrists stack over the elbows. Yeah. Just from there, you're going to go back one inch and up one inch. Go back one inch and up one inch. So you're feeling your sitting bones squeeze together. You're feeling your low belly pulling down. And you're staying really long, so it's still a neutral spine. I'm still stacked hips, ribs, shoulders, ears. I just took that stack and hinged it back a little bit. Two more, back an inch and up an inch. The last one, back an inch. Now take it back, hold it there, inhale. Exhale, send the arms long one more time. Yes, just from there, flip the palms up, flip the palms down. Flip it up, flip it down. So now I'm just asking my abdominals to hold the weight, not just of my upper body, but of the weights as well, right? You have two more, flip it up, flip it down. 
flip it up. Now I want you to hold that down and take a little press, little down, little press, little press. Now as you press down, I'm going to challenge you to hinge back a few more inches. And then really connect with your breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Remember the exhale is where you're going to get really deep in this abdominal engagement. So use that exhale to squeeze your sits bones in. Feel the sides of the waist drop in. If you're here for eight, six, four, three, two, hold, bit of breath. Exhale, come back two more inches. Drive down through your heels. Feel the ribs hug in and hold here four. Hold here three. Hold here two. Cross the legs, come all the way up. Standing, bringing your weights with you. Amazing work. From this position, we're gonna hinge the torso forward and soften through the knees. Now I want you to lift the elbows really high here and extend the arms all the way up to straight. Then bend the elbows and reach them out. Just like that, go bend and reach. It's bend and reach with these tricep kickbacks. Now with these kickbacks, just like in our seat work series, when I had you curling your heel in toward your glutes, then I asked you not to move your thigh. Same idea here. We're not gonna move the upper arm bones. The upper arm bones are staying in place with the elbow tips lifting higher than the back side of the ribs. It's just the lower arms that are lifting up to meet the upper arms. You're here for four, three, two. Now I'm gonna challenge you, keep the arms as straight as you can get them. The key with tricep work is to really extend the arms straighter and then try to keep the arms lifted higher than the back side of your ribs. From there, just lift the arms one inch up, one inch up, go a little up, a little up. So the pinky fingers are lifting up towards the ceiling. Check in with the upper body here. Oftentimes, we tense in the shoulders during arm work. See if you can soften the shoulder blades down the back, soften the knees, but stay really active in the abdominals. So even though we're focused on arms, we're still finding neutral in the spine. We're still drawing the pubic bone towards the belly button, and we're still wrapping the low ribs in. You have eight more lifts like this. Go eight, go six, here for four, three. Hold the lift, big breath in. As you exhale, I want you to squeeze your arms closer towards one another, and see if you can lift them just a little higher. Hold here for four, hold here for three, hold here for two, stand all the way up, lift the shoulders up to the ears, then actively roll them back and down, opening up across the chest. From here, lift the arms out and lower them down. We lift, we lower. So as you lift your arms, I want you to feel the knuckles really actively reaching away from your body. As you lower, could you stop your arms before they tap your thighs? So before you have that moment, that break, the goal of bar arm work is to use really light weights or even no weights and to have high repetition. So we're gonna do a lot of small movements for a long time, but the idea is that you're not using super heavy weights. So that you're able to keep your neck, your shoulders really soft. Two more, go lift. And lower, now I want you to hold the lift up, and I want you to flip the palms up to face the ceiling. Yes, from here, we just pulse the arms a little up, little lift, little lift. You wanna be able to see both hands in your peripheral vision here. So if that means you need to walk your arms slightly forward, go ahead and do that. As you pulse the arms up, really feel your shoulder blades drawing down your back, and your shoulders and your ears getting a little bit more space away from each other. Go eight, go six, here for four, three, two, hold that lift. I want you to bend the arms in half. Flip the palms to face me so you have this little goal post position. Now the ribs are gonna stay knitting together as you draw the elbows in. Open them out. It's elbows in and arms open. So as you open the arms, it's really tempting to arch the back. Check in with yourself. Maybe even use your exhale to remind yourself to keep engaged with the abdominals. Two more in and open. The last one goes in and open. Now take this one in, hold it. Extend the arms out in front of you. 
Now maybe close your eyes. Notice did you shift your weight back into your heels when you took the arms long. Shift the weight back forward into the big toe mound and just squeeze the arms in, in, little in an inch, in an inch. So it's like the palms are trying to give each other a high five here. This is it, you just have a hold and then we'll be done with the weights. You're there in eight, in six, go four, three, two, hold it there, inhale, arms get longer. As you exhale, soften your shoulders. Shoulders stack over the ribs, so you hold here four. Hold here three, hold here two, set the weights down off to the side, and take a moment, interlace the hands, flip the palms forward, and then do that thing I've been telling you not to do the whole time. Round through the upper back, tuck your chin to your chest, and let this be a really great big opening for the upper back. Big inhale, and a big exhale. Release the arms down, lift the shoulders up to the ears, roll them back, and then rotate to face me, finding that wide turned out position, that very same one you started in class, at the very beginning of class, I should say. So thigh bones externally rotate, we sink our hips down. Now drive your heels into the mat, and just like in the warm up, squeeze your heels towards each other. Feel how your thigh bones rotate open, and how your outer glutes fire. Now, if you're still hinging for it, totally fine. But if you're able to lift the shoulders over the hips, I would love for you to go there as we start to take a little pulse, little down, little down. So traditionally in a bar class, you're gonna have three thigh work exercises. At least one, I can speak for my classes, at least one of those exercises is always going to be turned out or externally rotated like this is. And at least one is always gonna be in parallel. So that we're working all sides of the quadriceps. Now thigh work is really very isolating for the thighs, but you also want to be thinking about how you're applying all the other information you've gained throughout class. So we're going to keep with this beautiful alignment, ears over shoulders, shoulders over ribs, ribs over hips. We're going to keep with the abdominal engagement, with the pubic bone drawing up so that the low back can stay really long. Because oftentimes as we tire in thigh work, we start to lean forward or we start to flare the rib cage wide open. You're here for eight, for six, here for four, three, stay low, lift the right heel up, lower it down, switch, left heel lift, left heel lower. Now as you lift the heel, I want you to feel your ankle bone pressing forward. Now I want you to feel your inner thigh pressing open because it's easy to roll out to the outside edge of the foot as you lift the heel. You want equal weight into the big toe mount and the pinky toe mount. In order to do that, you need to press the ankle bones forward. But we don't want to let the knees roll in, right? So we feel the inner thighs pressing out simultaneously. There's a lot of information I know. Be patient with yourself. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever took a bar class. I was dancing professionally at the time, so I was, in, I was in amazing shape. I was so strong. And I was in that second plank at the very beginning of class. And I just felt myself starting to shake. And I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> this is going to be really challenging. And it still was. It still is. Now I want to challenge you to lift your right heel and hold it. Start to pulse the hips down. Go eight seven, six, you're here for four, three, two, stay low, right heel lowers, the left heel lifts, pulse the hips, go eight, go six, here for four, three, two, stay low, inhale, exhale, left heel lowers. Now from here, maybe you reach the fingertips up as you soften your shoulders. If that doesn't feel good for you, go and take the hands to the heart. Just drop the hips for eight, seven, Six, your hold is in. Four, three, two, stay low, big breath. Exhale, sink the hips. Press the inner thighs open and lift the heart up. Hold here for four. Hold here for three. Hold here for two. Rise all the way up. Walk the feet together, still keeping this slight external rotation. So the heels come together and the toes are about four inches apart. 
lift the heels just slightly. And now bend the knees so you have this beautiful diamond shape in your legs. Squeeze your heels together. And then please know if balance is an issue, go ahead and just turn, find a wall, and take a hand to the wall. Squeeze your heels and hold. Go squeeze, hold. So this is called narrow V, or athletic V. You might hear it called narrow first position. Any of that, again, all the same thing. It's not gonna be anything like a traditional dance first position. I want it to be about half as wide as that. So your heels are squeezing in, you still have that external rotation of the thigh bones, so you're still opening the thigh bones out. Not as wide as you did in wide turnout, but still absolutely you have that rotation in the thighs. Two more, go squeeze. Now I want you to hold the squeeze at the heels. Here's where it's gonna be really tempting to lean forward. Keep the heart lifted, shoulders stay stacked over the hips, and take your hips down a little lower, and come up just halfway. Take it down, and lift. So my heels are hovering off the mat just an inch or two. As I lower, my knees are going forward over my second and third toe. Now it's okay in this position if your knees go past your toes because your heels are lifted. If you're in a squat and your heels are anchored, you never want your knees to go past your toes. That just puts too much pressure onto the patellar tendon. Two more, go down and lift. Take this one down, hold it. One more time, squeeze your heels together. Now like little butterfly wings, I want you to press your thigh bones back. Little press, little press. So the outer part of my thighs are pressing open and open and open, yes. As you start to tire in your thighs, you're probably gonna start to lose form. So check back in. Be sure that you're not leaning forward. Be sure that you're not arching the back and flaring the ribs. Be sure that you're not squeezing the butt here, right, and tucking and rounding through the low spine. We want to find that neutral alignment that we found in our bear plank again. You're here for eight, for six, here for four, three. Now you'll hold that press out, squeeze the heels together, and just one inch you go down an inch, up an inch. Little down, little up. Yes, it's little down, little up. I'm hoping you're feeling a lot of heat into your thighs. I am. <laughs> See, I warned you, it's gonna be a beginning class, but it was not gonna be easy. You have four more here, go four, three, go two, hold it low, squeeze the heels, inhale. Exhale, get a little lower. Now, if you've been counting, and I'm guessing you have, you know we've done two of our three thigh works. The last one's gonna be down on the mat. So I'm gonna challenge you to get a little lower here, squeeze the heels a little deeper, take a big breath. Exhale, hold four. Hold three, get lower. Hold two, turn to your left, come down onto your knees. Now, if you have sensitive knees and you want to roll your mat up for a little cushion, you're welcome to do that. We're going to find that long hinge position we found earlier today. Arms are going to sweep forward. Squeeze the inner thighs together, inhale. As you exhale, just like you did in your seat work, I just want you to lean back a few inches and then come all the way back up. So it's exhale, hinge. Not in your seat work. You did this in abdominal work. <laughs> you guys are like, what is she talking about? So you'll recall when we had those weights in our hands and we were hinging back until the abdominals fired. Same thing we're doing here. The only difference is now it's gonna be the quadriceps that fire. Probably a little deeper. <laughs> At least mine are, right? Absolutely feel my abdominals working. But this is a quadricep exercise for me. Two more, go back and lift. Last one, go back. And lift, I want you to hinge this one back. I want you to hold that hinge. Imagine your inner thighs are trying to touch each other and really actively pull them together. If this bothers your knees, I want you to play with tucking your toes under just so you take a little bit of pressure off the knee joints. If it feels okay, keep the feet long. Now just one inch, you go back an inch, up an inch, little back. Little lift, yes, this is very intense. At least I think it's very intense. So this is going to be a very short series. And this is actually where you're gonna finish today's class before you come into your stretch. We are applying everything we've done today in this position. So you're in that neutral alignment. The front of the throat is open. The collarbones are wide. The ribs are knitting together. Pubic bone is drawing up to the belly button. Hips are hugging towards one another. Sits bones are squeezing, 
absolutely your glutes are gonna be active here as well. You're here for four and hold. Go three, and go two. Now I want you to press it back and hold it there. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, squeeze the inner thighs towards one another. And if you want more, you're gonna lift the arms higher up to the sky. Could you lean back one more inch and maybe close your eyes? You hold it here for four, hold it here for three, hold it here for two, you made it. Come to all fours. Amazing work. Take a moment, rock the hips from side to side, just releasing to the quadriceps and through the hips. Oh, that feels so good. Take a big inhale and a big exhale. Now come back to center here. Take a moment, flip your fingertips back toward your knees and then reach your hips back towards your heels, just gently getting a nice wrist stretch here. We did do a fair bit of work on the hands. Take a big inhale and a big exhale. Shift the weight back forward, rotate your fingertips forward again, and then sit back on your heels. <clears throat> Bring your big toes to touch and take the knees out into this nice little V shape. Right hand's gonna come behind you, sweep the left arm up high, and then lift the hips, really opening up through the whole left line of the body. Left glute squeezes, the top of the left foot pushes down into the mat, take a big breath in, and a big breath out. Go ahead and switch sides, left arm reaches behind you, plans down into the mat, right arm sweeps high, and then we lift the hips, squeezing through the right glute, pushing down to the top of the right foot, and lifting up to that right hip so you get a nice opening to the right quadricep, and into the right side obliques. Big breath in, and a big breath out. Come back to center, sweep your legs around in front of you, and we will find a seated figure four stretch. Right ankle crosses over the left thigh. Now press your hands down into the floor to lift the heart up. And if you find that you just cannot lift your chest in this position, slide your left foot farther forward so you give yourself a little bit more space. Hmm. I love to move side to side in this position. I just think it feels so great. But if you prefer to stay still, you should do that. That's one of my favorite things about the at-home workout is that it's really just an opportunity to check in with yourself. And most of us have these crazy busy lives where we really don't get to check in and think, what do I need? What do I want right now? What does my body need? I feel like most of the time it's, what does my child need? What does my job need? What does, you know? So take this time and really practice that. What do I need right now? Take one more big breath in. Let it go. And we're gonna switch sides. Left ankle crosses over right thigh. Hands press down to the floor, you lift the heart up. And again, if you need more space, you just go ahead and walk your right foot farther away from you. I have pretty open hips, so I can have my right heel in pretty close to me. Again, movement, stillness, your call. And if you prefer to do this, this stretch down on your back, then go ahead and do that. Let's take a big breath in and let it go. Go ahead and cross your legs or find any seated position that you find comfortable. One last stretch here. Take the left arm, reach it up and over. Big side stretch and just hold it. Press the left sit bone down into the floor and then reach the left fingertips long, opening the chest up to the sky. Big breath. Exhale. One more time, inhale, exhale, inhale up through center, switch side to right arm, big side stretch over towards the left, right sits bone anchors down into the floor, right fingertips reach so you get really long through the right side body. Maybe you rotate the heart up to the sky, big breath in, let it go. One more time, inhale, exhale. Come back to center. Join me to sweep the arms up and a big breath in. Exhale, let it go. 
and that was your class for today. I hope that that was helpful. I hope that you're feeling a little more confident, a little more ready to step into a faster paced bar class. If you like this class, please let me know. I would be happy to make more or even a intro to bar series if that would be something people would be interested in. So please comment below. Let me know if that's a yes from you. And I will be back next week with a brand new Bar With Mary class. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll help you have an amazing day.